So, Jim, uh, you have deep experience, I know, in industry where you yourself were a programmer and software engineer, and our audience uh, all over the world is 50,000 people uh, who are trying to get or improve their C++ skills. Uh, how much of C and C++ have you used in your own work? Well, sure. Thanks, Ira. Well, first of all, I just want to say how excited I am that you're doing this uh, class on C++ on Coursera. I think it's really exciting to see the large number of people who are excited to learn C++ from you. It's really gratifying to see that interest out there. Um, in terms of my own uh, background and experience, I worked uh, at the Raytheon company in their equipment division in the late 80s and early 90s on air traffic control systems. And uh, at that time, it was all uh, embedded firmware programming, and C was the language that we were programming in, along with Ada. Uh, and so C was certainly um, a language that I knew extremely well and uh, you know, really took advantage of its ability to be down very close to the hardware and uh, have a high degree of control over the performance of the code. Um, it was really a very, um, very elegant and very powerful language to be doing that work in. Now uh, that you run the department, I know many of the sub-programs in the department include uh, advanced courses in software engineering, engineering and web development that I think you helped design, as well as a game design senior project major. And I know a lot of those students come through and take the course that is essentially the same course I'm giving on Coursera. Uh, do you have a sense of what those students need from uh, this kind of programming course? Right, good question. Um, you know, we're certainly finding that with our game design students, uh, even though increasingly people making games are not using C++ to develop those games, uh, knowledge of C++ is still what differentiates the really serious uh, software engineers in the games world from those who are per not perceived to be as serious or not perceived to be as strong. Um, and it's also very much the case that if you want to do game engine programming, uh, you, you know, you really need to know C++ because C++ is still the de facto uh, language for doing game engine programming, uh, especially on Windows. Um, kind of more broadly, um, you know, C++ is a language that is perceived to be very uh, challenging to, to learn and to work with, and um, there still are a wide range of applications out there in industry that are developed in C++ and that, um, you know, continue to be, to be worked on. So there's um, a large number of jobs out there for students who have interest in uh, C++ and who want to work on these large applications. Um, the world has not completely shifted over to the web yet, um, and uh, C++ still has a very powerful role to play in making these uh, high-performance desktop applications. Now, I know uh, a lot of the uh, audience that I have are themselves undergraduates who are interested in pursuing graduate work, and I, I, I think they've seen uh, from your office window how pretty the campus is. There are redwoods right behind you. Uh, but I also am aware of the fact that you've provided advice to foreign students on your website for some of the things they need to think about in applying to both the computer science major and especially some of the new master programs. Maybe you could briefly describe that to, to the audience. Sure, I'd be happy to. The, uh, you know, here at UC Santa Cruz, we have a uh, traditional masters of computer science uh, and a PhD in computer science. And we have, uh, you know, many students both uh, from the United States and internationally in those programs. Uh, Santa Cruz itself is located just an hour away from Silicon Valley, and so I like to think that we have the best of both worlds. We're here in Santa Cruz with all of its natural beauty and access to the beach, um, really great quality of life, um, but it's also really easy for our students to go off and get internships at uh, companies in Silicon Valley. 
Um, I personally have had three of my PhD students go off to work at Google, um, and they're just happy as a clam working in there. So, uh, so there's great opportunities uh, within that program. Uh, just this year, we launched a new uh, master's degree program focused on computer games. So it's our master's in games and playable media. And that's uh, actually located at our uh, UC Silicon Valley Center, um, which is located in Santa Clara. And so that's right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, we have industry veterans, uh, John Romero and Brenda Romero, as the key people leading that program. Uh, John Romero, uh, you may recall, was the person who created Doom and Quake back in the day, along with John Carmack. And Brenda Romero is extremely famous in her own right. Uh, her experience goes back to the Apple II Plus and the game called Wizardry. Um, so together they bring just a phenomenal uh, depth of experience and set of connections to the games industry to bear. Um, in terms of advice, you know, for our uh, master's and PhD program, uh, you know, that personal statement ends up being one of the more important things that we look at in the application. And grades are important for sure, GREs are important, um, but at the end of the day, we're also looking, as most especially for our PhD students, for a student who's really um, kind of thought a bit about what we have to offer here at UC Santa Cruz, um, that they sort of know what our strengths are, and they're coming here to study with people and to take advantage of those strengths. Um, so we really like to see a, a personal statement that really kind of demonstrates that you've put some thought into that, that you know that UC Santa Cruz has a lot to offer. Uh, in your particular area of expertise. And I think if you do that, then you end up being really happy as a student because you know what you're getting into. Um, you don't end up coming here and then realize, oh, your passion is in one area and, and we don't have strengths in that area. So um, so I think that's really good. And I also, um, I guess I notice a lot of times that you know students in their personal statements, they want to sort of describe how passionate they are about computer science and how they've been studying it from a, an early age. and. I generally find that's not as helpful to put into these personal statements because almost anyone who's going through the effort of applying to a graduate program is pretty passionate and interested in computer science. And so, you know, I sort of take that as a granted and then uh, build on top of that. Um, but, uh, you know, we certainly give all of our applications very careful consideration. We're in a period where we're actively growing our uh, graduate student population here. Uh, we're actively growing, especially in the area of uh, big data and data science. Um, we just made a new hire of uh, Lisa Gatour uh, in that area, and that builds on existing strengths we have. So, um, you know, it's an exciting time here at UC Santa Cruz, and I think if you have interest uh, in computer games or in straight computer science, uh, we have a lot to offer to you. So definitely would uh, kind of recommend you check us out and see if we uh, might meet your needs for more uh, serious postgraduate study. Great. Uh, I can't help but uh, ask you a last question before I let you go because I know you're a world authority on, on bugs and it's really easy to write buggy C and C++ code and I know you've studied issues on uh, how to uh, deal with bugs in, in industry. Uh, do you have any personal tips for, for the students on uh, what a best approach is from your point of view? Uh, wow, well, that's a, <laughs> that's a big and open-ended question. Um, I would say, um, you, know, uh, you know, I'm not sure I have, you know, any kind of silver bullet in this area because I think if we, we knew that, we would be, be shouting that loud and clear. Um, you know, kind of a lot of the existing techniques tend to each in and of themselves work relatively well. So uh, test-driven development where you write your test cases and then you uh, write your code to match those test cases, and that's generally considered to be a best practice. And um, the act of writing those test cases ahead of time really helps you think through what that black box behavior is of your code. Um, formal modeling of your code um, is a very expensive and time-consuming activity, but um, also has the same property of having you really think through what your code is going to do before you sit down and write it. Um, other people, you know, have recommended that you sort of just write the documentation about that code before you write it. And again, it's part of this process of just really thinking through what that code is going to do before you sit down and actually start writing the code. Um, but I have to say, the more that I've been studying computer bugs, the more mysterious I find them to be. Um, there's sort of a class of bugs that kind of come in uh, as you're writing the code, um, but then there seem to be other bugs that appear in code and they have more to do with 
kind of the external environment of the code changing over time, and, and you then need to update the code to reflect that changing environment. Or um, it sometimes seems to be the case that there are bugs in the code or things that are getting fixed that have more to do with um, good consistency maintenance after other changes that were made to the code. So somebody maybe changes an API in one part of the code and it has ripple effects and they, in the initial change, they managed to get, you know, 90% of them, but there was still the remaining 10% that weren't immediately obvious and then they needed to fix those afterwards. Um, so, you know, kind of I'm, you know, increasingly interested in trying to understand, like, what are the root causes of bugs? and some of them are cognitive errors. Some of them are errors of just not quite having thought through what you want to do. Um, but I think there are these other bugs which are due to kind of the environment changing or emergent behavior or consistency maintenance, which also uh, end up um, kind of having a pretty big effect on the number of things that need to get fixed in code. Okay, great. Well, uh, those are wonderful tips for the students. And uh, uh, thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, well, uh, and again, uh, you know, continued good luck with your course, Ira. Um, you know, I think uh, you uh, certainly are, have a record within the computer science department. I dare say there has not been a course that we've ever seen offered that has had 50,000 students in it, so uh, that's pretty impressive. Okay. Bye now. All right. Take care, Ira.